Russian Balkan. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint an Ultramarine's Leviathan Dreadnought. If you like the channel and you'd like to support me, my coffee and Patreon page are linked below. Now on to the video. This is the miniature we're going to be working on for this video. It's a Leviathan Dreadnought from Forge World painted up in Ultramarine's colours. Great little miniature, but this is what we're hopefully going to end up with at the end. First colour we're going to use is Citadel Mephiston Red. And we're going to be using this to paint the eye lenses, the tips of the rockets, and the two lenses on the targeters, one on each gun. Now we're using some Citadel Retributor armor, flashing up quickly on the right hand side there. We're going to use this to do all of the little gold sections on the armor. So there's lots of little bits of gold trim. Also end up doing the edges to the headlamps on the front there. And the sort of like the bolts on the sides of the leg too. There's like two on each side. But any little details that you think would look good in gold, just hit them up with a little bit of Retributor armor. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Iron Hand Steel, and it's going to be to paint all of the silvery parts of the miniature. Now there's loads of bits here, you've got like the bullet belt underneath there, you've got the barrels to all the weapons, little clamps on the weapons, all kinds of metal bits all over the exhaust and around the front too. So just get all those bits painted up with the Iron Hand Steel or Lead Belcher, whichever you prefer, both work fine. And we can move on to the next colour. Now we're going to add a little bit of white to the miniature. We're going to do those two big plates of armour on the front there and one of the knee pads just to give them that nice crisp white look to make them stand out against the blue. Now I'm going to use some Vallejo Black to do the main body of the two weapon arms. So you've got the little recoil sections here. You've also got the casing and the ammo containers at the back there. And the same on the other side too. You have two or three larger parts that you're going to be doing in black to do the body of those weapons. Now it's a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome. I'm going to use this just to do a few little pieces on it, little details, like the extendable parts of the pistons that he's got on his back there. Couldn't think of the name of them. He's got two on the back of the pelvis too. You've also got some little hinges on the ammo cases on the right there. I'm going to use a tiny little bit of Citadel Avalon Sunset just to do some of the tubes on the weapon arm here. Now if you get a nice smooth layer of this, once we've done the shade, we're not really going to come back to it and highlight it. I'm just going to leave it like that because it's going to be a bit manky and a little bit dirty on the back of the weapon there. So if you get that a nice smooth yellow layer, that'll look all the better. Now we're going for some Citadel wire flesh and we're just going to do another one of those wires with this. I'm leaving one in blue and use the red that we used for the lenses earlier on to do the other wire. But whatever colour you want to do the wires, just crack on with that. Now 
Moving on to shades and contrasts, we're going to start with Citadel Apothecary White Contrast. I'm just going to go over all of the white sections with this. Other than those little lights at the front there, you're going to leave them headlamps white so that we can do them with another shade in a bit. Next up it's Citadel Drucci Violet, I'm going to use this to go over all of the sections that we've painted red. Now I'm going to use some Citadel Agrax Earth Shade. I'm going to use this to do all of the gold sections. And I'm also going to use this to do the wires at the back of that big six barrel gun on the right hand side there. That is just to give them that dirty and grubby look. If you make sure that more shade goes into the recesses than over the red, yellow, green and blue, then you'll get that kind of nice grubby look. And say doing more highlights and things on them later on. Next we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Cassandora Yellow, just going to use this to do the six headlamps on the front there. Just give them a quick wash with this, that'll be good to go. Now we're going to use Citadel Null Oil, we're going to use this for all of the silvery metallics and also on the blue. I'm doing this on the blue because it's quite a large one. I want it to look quite dark and grimy. And on larger areas, the Drachenhof Nightshade doesn't really do too much for shading. So I'm going to give it a null oil coat. And then we can start working on the colours and reapplying them as we go through. Working on the blue again now, we're going to use Citadel McCrag Blue. We're going to start reapplying the colour. Now thinking about where the light is coming down, you're going to have the undersides and the underside of ridges are going to be shaded. So think about where the light is going to be catching it and apply the McCrag Blue to the areas that are going to be catching the most light. So you still have some of those shaded areas on display. So like the underside of the armour on the groin there and the bit underneath the kind of cockpit area, I suppose, is going to be a lot darker than areas sort of like on the top of the shoulders and things like that. Now I'm going to mix a little bit of Vallejo White with the McCrag Blue just to lighten that up. Now we're going to do some highlights. So we're going to do about 50% of the area that we've just done with the McCrag Blue with this one. So we're going to do like halfway down some of the panels, that kind of thing, and applying it to the areas that are going to be getting more light than other areas, just to give it that effect that the light is coming down from the top and highlighting that armour. Now, adding a little bit more Vallejo White to the previous mix, we're now going to do mainly edge highlights. And this is just to bring out all the details. So you're going to think about where the light is going to be catching those edges and applying that. I go for one side of the vertical, so I think it's the right-hand side of the verticals I mainly do. And the top of any of those bottom ridges, so to speak. The one that you can see highlighted horizontally on that groin guard. And also the top of all the bolts. And that'll just give it that consistent look throughout the whole model if you're just doing those parts. Now the worst part in the world is reapplying that white. If you do a white army of any kind, hats off to you. I wouldn't have the patience for it. But we are now going to reapply the white to the knee pad and the front armour. So you want to be leaving some areas slightly darker than the rest, mainly on the undersides. On that knee it's more notable because you've got that ridge about two thirds of the way down. So that is going to be the point where your to stop doing the white and just leave that shade there and on these parts i just leave sort of like the bottom edges of certain areas just a little bit darker with that shade 
just so that it does have that little bit of shade on the white. Going back to Citadel, my fist on red now. I'm going to start reapplying that to the top, sort of two thirds of the rockets. And also, we're going to be doing a little crescent at the back of each eye lens and a crescent on the bottom left hand half of each of the lenses for the targeter on those weapon arms. Going to use some Citadel Evil Sun Scarlet and we are going to highlight the lenses. So you're going to cover about 50% of the area that you did with Mephisto on red. You're going to do about 50% of that with the Evil Sun Scarlet to get that first highlight there. Now we're going to use some Citadel Wild Rider Red. We're going to do some little patches with this. It's not quite an edge highlight. You're going to do a few little bits that are around those edges. Probably doing about 50% of the Evil Sun Scarlet area with this colour. Now I'm going to use a tiny little bit of Citadel Troll Slayer Orange. I'm going to use this to do about 50% of the areas that we did with the Wild Rider Red. And this is mainly just going to be edge highlights on all of those little edges on the rockets. Tiny little thin line of highlights on the lenses too. Now we're having some Citadel Retributor Armor and we're going to reapply the gold back to the miniature. So thinking again, where the light's coming from, where it's going to be shaded, you want to be making sure that you are applying the gold back to the areas that will be getting the most light, and leaving a little bit of shade in the areas that will be a bit more shaded, like the underside of the gun arms and things like that, and the underside of any protruding parts that are gold. It is good to do a bit of high edge highlighting with this colour on the underside bits that aren't getting much light, just so that you've got that little shiny edge that will probably pick up a little bit more light. I wasn't too happy with the shading in those recesses there on that gold so I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Black Templar Contrast and just drag that down each of those to make those stand out and darken them up so that you can't see just a big slightly recessed piece of gold in there. Could do this with just black as well if you wanted to. Now to highlight the gold, we're going to use some Citadel Liberator Gold. So we're going to do about 50% of the area that we did with the Retributor Armour. We're just going to pick out those details and get the shine on there. Now we've got some of those larger areas of gold, like on the casing of that big multi-barrel job on the left weapon arm. You can do a few patches of Liberator Gold on there, just so there's a big patch as though it's catching the light. And that'll give it a nice good shine. Now we're going to add a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome to the mix. We're just going to do some edge highlights on the gold and on those larger areas we did on that multi-barreled weapon casing. We are just going to do some slightly bigger areas, about 50% of the area that you did the Liberator Gold. And that will give that a nice shiny reflection kind of on that. I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Lead Belcher here. It's just to reapply some shine back to those areas of Iron Hand Steel. In hindsight, I would have used Iron Hand Steel again, but I picked up the wrong pot because they look very, very similar. Because there's a break of probably about 
a month and a half between me recording the first part of this and this part. I couldn't remember which one I'd used. Let's do a little bit of edge highlighting on those weapons. We're going to use a tiny little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome just to pick out the details and that will make them shine quite a lot. You can see just from those little brush strokes there how much that shows up when you add some to the very, very edges. Now we are going to use some Vallejo White. We're just going to do some little spots of reflection on the eye lenses. So you're doing a little spot at the front and a tiny, tiny thin line towards the back of the eye lens. Going to make that spot a little bit bigger. Same again on the other lens. And then we're going to do a tiny little line on those lenses on the weapons. A tiny little line on the highlighted areas. A little spot of light on the top right of each of those lenses. Now we're going to use Vallejo Black and reapply black to all those areas we put it on earlier. It's mainly just to touch up either any areas that may have been missed or any areas that other bits of paint have gone on to. To highlight the black, we're going to use Vallejo German Grey. We're going to use this just to do the sort of top 50% of all of those sections of black. So the top edges, top 50% of these little recoil things. Sort of do about from the top, about halfway down each of the side panels too, like so. And most of the top surface of those areas will do with this too. Now I'm going to use some Citadel Mechanica Standard Grey. I'm just going to use this to do edge highlights to all of the black areas. So like we did with the blue armour, we are going to use this to do the top edges of all the little panels and one side of the verticals too. Okay, so I'm going to start working on tempering the barrel to this multi-barreled melter thing on his arm here. So we're going to start with Citadel Agraxair Shade. And we are just going to do a thin layer of this around the very back end of each of these barrels. Follow this with a little bit of Seraphim Sepia touching against that Agraxair Shade. If they're both wet, it doesn't matter if they merge a little bit too much because you do get some funky effects with tempered metal. But do a little thin line of this around the side of the Agrax Air Shade. And once we finish with that, we can go on to Citadel Cassandora Yellow. And this is going to be to do another thin line next to the Seraphim Sepia. I'll link up a video which shows it in a little bit more detail on one single barrel so you can see the effect as that goes along. But it'll be that that we'll be working on here. Next it's Citadel Fugan Orange. You can do another thin line of this next to the sepia. And 
and a little thin line of Caribbean Crimson next to that. Now Caribbean Crimson has bags of colour to it, so you only do a really, really thin layer of this. You don't want it to go too dark red. Now it's some Citadel Drucci Violet going in a thin line next to the red. And Citadel Drachenhof Nightshade is going on next to the Drucci Violet. And finally, a little bit of Null Oil for the very end of those barrels, just to darken them up. I'm going to add some McCrag Blue, just doing the Ultramarines Inverted Omega badge on the front of the armour here. I'll link up a video of how I paint the Ultramarines badge and freehand that on there. And then I'm going to use a little bit of white, I haven't really shown it on here because it is literally just the same effect I use on parchments, doing the horizontal lines, so there's a little bit of text. And I just add a few little bits of white text around the miniature, so you'll see those on the back by his engines if the model rotates around. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Forge World Black Soot pigment, that's just like chalk dust, but it comes out really, really well. I'm using quite a soft brush to apply this, and I'm just kind of brushing it onto the areas that I want to look a bit dulled and dirty and charred. I'm using a little bit of this around where the heavy flames are jutting out from the torso there and also up by the exhausts on the top of the armour and the top of the exhaust themselves. Also use a little bit around the front end of the barrels where the null oil is on the other weapon arm too. And with that completed we have the finished Leviathan Dread. Really pleased with how it came out big chunk to stand in the middle of a sea of blue. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also think about subscribing to some of our other social media, link below. Thanks very much. If you like the channel and you enjoy the content and you'd like to support me, my coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Thanks very much.